Um, this summer, I went to Black Hat. And while I was browsing the talks, I saw one that was called GDPR, Using Privacy Laws to Steal Identities. I was like, yeah, I want to see that one. Either I learn that we're doing everything right, and we all get to congratulate each other or be happy, or I have to run and fix things right now. The other way, I call that a win-win situation. So, I'm going to talk today about verifying user access rights in an encryption-based system. I'm Pilar Garcia from 1Password. So, these are a couple of 1Password little friends. And let me tell you a little bit about what it is. 1Password is a password manager, as all of you have <laughs> learned earlier this morning. Um, it generates, stores, and autofills passwords for you. All your data is encrypted. 1Password data is encrypted locally by a secret key that is a high entropy 128 bits that is generated locally and never sent over to us, and a master password that you choose when you create your account that is also never sent over to us. If you're using 1Password with other people, the other people in your account can help you recover access, um, the people you've given trust to, but us at 1Password can never recover access to your account. If you lose your secret key or your master password, you're on your own. That's it. We can't do anything. OK, so that's it, right? If you have the decryption <coughs> keys, then you have access to the data. If you don't, you don't. We can all go home. Well, that's not the end of the story. Because in a system used by humans, we'll end up interacting with those humans. So I'm going to tell you about four scenarios in which in our day-to-day -day interactions with our customers, we have to further verify their identities. For the first of these two scenarios, the customer we're talking to, and I'm sorry, my throat is a little bit coarse after the flights. For the first two scenarios, the customer or the person we're talking to does not have access to 1Password, and for the second two, they do. So let me begin with the first one. It's related to two-factor authentication. 1Password allows you to set two-factor authentication via TOTP. It will only require the second factor when the concept of two-factor of authentication is relevant. So um, to set up a new device. Um, of course, with having two-factor authentication, we have yet one more thing that people can lose to get themselves locked out. So what do we do? You can tell people, please, pretty please, store your recovery key somewhere so you can get yourself out of it. You can tell people, please, set up several authenticator apps in more than one phone, so if you lose one, you can still access it. You can allow the option to disable 2FA from anywhere where you have set up one password. You can even give them SMS recovery codes, um, but no, we are not going to do that. <laughs> if anyone wants to see the collection of scams that I've gotten in the last year via SMS, I have a few fun ones. It doesn't matter how hard you try there will still be people who get themselves locked out. And then you have to decide what you're going to do. It can be tempting to say, hey, we gave you like 10 things to do. You didn't do them. You're on your own. But we are not going to do that. We already have to say that for the secret key and master password. And we don't want to add yet one more thing to get people to lose their data. So the first thing that we require is for the request to disable 2FA to come from the exact same email address that the 1Password account is registered to. But control of the email address is not enough. So what we do is we ask people a few questions about their 1Password account. For example, what is the date that you created the account? 
How are you paying for it? What are the names on the devices? Enough questions that will give us the confidence that the person we are communicating with is indeed the owner of the account. Once we get enough of these questions asked, answered correctly, then we can go ahead and disable 2FA for them. And just so we're clear, if this person doesn't have already the decryption keys, the disabled 2FA will not really do anything. So this is the first scenario in which we need to verify who we're talking to. The second one, in which the person doesn't have access to the account, is pretty interesting because it has to do with one of the things that is most important for all of us, money. When one password went to the cloud, it all people. And we had a lot of people, or a few people, who were upset about the subscription thing. Um, we heard, like, no, subscriptions are all scammy. Uh, you only want people to put their credit card there and forget. No, uh, we are doing this because this is the best experience of 1Password for people. But if you don't want to give us your money, we don't want it. Plain and simple. Or we thought it was simple. Then we got an email like this one. Our company credit card is being billed for a 1Password account. We don't know who owns this account, but we need to stop the charge. Suddenly, this is not that easy. We don't want to be taking this person's money if they don't even know where it's going to. But we also cannot go and tinker with someone's account just like that. So this is not the only way um, in which we can have this situation. These are a couple of other common scenarios. At the end of the day, the point is, the person does not have access to the 1Password account. The person does not have access to the email account. They might not even know what it is. But they're seeing a 1Password charge in their credit card bill, and they want that to stop. And it's, we have to help them do that. So our very first solution was, OK, we can find out who the owner is. Let's get in touch with the owner and ask them to fix it. Yeah, we never got any replies, so <laughs> that didn't actually help that much. Our second attempt was, this is not about the 1Password account. This is about the charge. Figure it out with your bank. Please put in a dispute. Um, this was better, at least the, sol the problem got solved, but it was still not very good. Um, it was a lot of work for the customer. It sent the wrong message. Well, we chose to do this because it sounded like the most secure way and the smartest way to keep people's privacy. What it actually did was made it sound like we didn't want to help, and that was not good. And finally, it turns out that banks don't like it when you get reported so often. So had to go back to the drawing board. We decided to keep the same spirit of this isn't actually about the one password account. This is about the payment, about the credit card. So we asked the customer the details of their credit card. With that, we can find it in our system. Account goes, if we can find the credit card, we remove it from the account. The account goes in what is called trial mode, which means for 30 more days, the person will be able to use it normally. And after that, it gets frozen. The information stays there. Nothing gets touched or deleted. But if they want to continue to use it, they need to add a new credit card. If we can't find the credit card, well, there's nothing we can do. Either way, we give the exact same answer to the person who wrote in to us. And that is, hi, we can confirm that the credit card you gave us information for is not in our systems from now on, and you won't see a charge anymore. We don't even reveal whether we did find the account or not. So that is a way that we have found to 
deal with the payment part without having to give information about a one password account. Interestingly, when it's a business, like the first example I gave, they can get very pushy. Hey, just pretty please, just tell me the name. I need to talk to them. No, I can stop it. No, no, don't worry, just give me the name. No, that's not happening. So, we have now seen two situations in which we see every day where we have to further verify people's identity beyond the encryption keys. And in these two, people did not have access to the account. For the next two, we do require people who are talking to us to have access. And they are both related to GDPR. The first one is right to erasure or right to be forgotten. GDPR says you have a right to leave a system if you want. Um, a lot of companies will collect a lot of your data. You have a right for that data to not be used for the rest of forever if you're done with them. But deleting permanently data is also pretty sensitive. You want to be sure that the person really wants that and understands what they're asking for. Um, the amount of people that we hear that soft-deleted their 1Password account on the regular tells us that, yeah, the concept of delete does not send a message of permanent for a lot of the people. And with something with, like passwords, that's not a risk we can take. So what we have asked to do is go and delete your 1Password account from an authenticated session. In other words, again, the request has to be account there, address registered to the account, log into 1Password, delete the account there, let us know, and then we can go ahead and erase it. And we're happy to do that if that is met, if the account has already been deleted by the user from an authenticated session. This part is important because it is possible to delete a 1Password account with just access to the email address. If you delete it that way, we cannot go ahead with the full erasure. It has to be from an authenticated session. So this is how we deal with write of erasure. The next one is write of access. Oh, I am sorry. I wanted to show the way that 98% of the request looks like. So I find it really interesting. There is this service that if you give them full read and write access to your email, they will automatically send emails to everything they can come up with asking to permanently erase data forever. Please note that I am not looking for instructions on how to delete my account. I want you to delete all my data due to this request. I find this line to be extremely irresponsible. This service is sending automatic emails to hundreds of services for this person, and they just want all of these services to completely permanently nuke this data? I think that's exactly the kind of abuse that the guy on the talk at Blackhead was talking about. That's not something that anybody should be doing. We should be sure that people actually want to erase their data into oblivion before doing that. Okay. Now we can actually go to the right of access. Right of access means you have a right to know what we know about you. In the case of 1Password, the answer is very little. Uh, we go through great lengths to only ever collect what we absolutely need to be able to give you the service. But that's not zero. We are able to see whatever name you've given to us, which does not have to be your real name. You can be Princess Sparkles if you want. We don't care. The email address, that is the key thing, that, is, that there's a reason why we use that as 
the main thing to know that we're talking to the right person. Um, we have some IPs, we have some device information, we have a few details on usage, we have your profile picture, a few things like that. Not going to just a right to know what that is. But also, we are not going to just give it all away. So, again, request needs to come from the right email address, but we need to know that you can actually get into the one password account. So, what we have come up with is we at one password generate a code with one password and ask you to change your name or last name to it. This code will be different for each customer. It's around this length. And then we can go into our back office system and look at it. If it matches, you have shown to us that you do have access to the 1Password account. And then we can collect the data for you and give it to you happily. And let me tell you, that name's almost easier to pronounce than my full legal name. <laughs> so, you might have noticed for these two GDPR related requests, the point is that the customer needs to have access to the account. GDPR is unclear on a few things. For example, if you have forgotten your master password, are we still supposed to give you all the information we have about you? It might be unclear for GDPR, but for us it is pretty clear. We are not going to put our customers' data and privacy at risk, trying to blindly follow a law that has been designed to protect just that. So, unless you have access to your account, we will not go forward. So today we have seen four different scenarios in which we still have to further verify access rights from people even if 1Password is based on encryption. When you're dealing with humans, you will find these kinds of situations often. So, who are you anyway? Thank you. <laughs>